In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can brainwash yourself into a successful self-concept. Now, believe it or not, you've actually already been brainwashed. In fact, we're all gathered here today because we were all brainwashed between zero and seven years old. And let's be clear of what brainwashing actually is. Brainwashing refers to manipulating the beliefs and sense of self of an individual. Now, think about early on, you have care caretakers around you where your survival is in their hands. Those caretakers ha could have had the best of intentions and they tried to control or manipulate how you should be, what you should do according to what they thought you should do. Now you could have also had emotionally immature caretakers who did things in certain ways that manipulated your beliefs and sense of self in a very negative way. No matter what your experience was, that impact of shaping your concept, you hold of yourself and all the beliefs and assumptions that go under that umbrella is the lens of how you see reality. We do not see reality as it is. We see reality as we are through our self-concept. The difference now is that you are going to shape that self-concept according to who you want to be. But this is going to take a process and I'm going to share with you three steps with the practical application that you can do to take advantage of this. So why is your self-concept so important? In the words of Neville Goddard, he said, change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Not because everything changes outside of you, but because of what you're able to perceive of and energetically resonate with. Now, Dr. Joe also has an interesting quote. He says, if you want a new outcome, so if you want a different experience in your life, you will have to break the habit of being yourself. Now realize, break the habit of who you think you are. Break the habit of who you were brainwashed into being and reinvent a new one, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. So realize to brainwash, you have to do it systematically. You have to do it with repetition and strong emotion. And we're gonna be using that exact framework and method to help you get the experiences that you want in life and the ones you really deserve to have. So let's get to part one. So step one, unfreezing. That doesn't sound brainwashy. So what does it mean? It means disintegration of your former self. And remember Dr. Joe's quote where we have to replace the old one with a new one. So step one is starting to dissolve the old one. To me, this is the easiest way to replace a belief and to start introducing a new concept for yourself because if it's firmly held in place, you can hit it, you can struggle, you can try to force it, but nothing changes if it stays locked together. Now, the easiest way to do this is shifting perspective. So right now, I'm going to put an image on the screen to show you how powerful a shifting a perspective is when it comes to how you relate to past situations. So on the screen right now is the picture. What image do you see? What if I were to tell you there's actually two different images in this same image? So go ahead and comment below whatever you see first. I'm really interested to get y'all's um, perspective and I'll share later which one I saw first. So I'm gonna show you now. The first one I saw is actually a duck, right? And I'll show you now and outline what the duck looks like and how I saw it. Now, the second animal that's in this is actually a rabbit. And I'll go ahead and show you here, turn the image around and outline it here so you could see it. But in my opinion, this image is so powerful because in the same image, you can see radically different things. And this is the concept of disintegration of the old self. And how do you do this when it comes to your self-concept? So for me, this is the easiest way I found. Your self-concept, that original brainwashing came from how the adult saw you. So if you didn't get the love and connection or maybe the adult was really mean to you, you could have thought, well, this person knows better than me because they can keep me alive and I don't have those skills. So they know better and they're not treating me very well. Well, that's probably my fault. I'm probably not enough. 
and they, if I was enough, they would treat me well, but since I'm the issue, then I'm not enough. Or maybe this adult was really, really busy and you felt like you had to prove or earn their love. And if you could get their love through your accomplishments with sports, or maybe it was about academics, whatever it was, then you would prove that you're worthy. And when you prove you're worthy, then they would love you. But since they don't have enough time for you, you were, you're unworthy. And then maybe you could feel like when you went for a connection, if that overwhelmed them, you're like, oh my God, I'm too much, right? So that's the original brainwashing. You think you're the issue. Uh, to begin to dissolve this and to start to brainwash yourself, to unfreeze, the key is how do you see that old situation through your adult eyes? Not reliving it from the, the, the younger self, but seeing your younger self in this situation, what do you see it as an adult? Okay, this adult is too busy for you, right? Maybe they're trying so much, they're trying to get money, they, they don't feel good enough, they're trying to seek um, the validation in other people. Well, is that because you're not good enough? Or is that because they have their own insecurities and they are letting you down in that situation from what you needed? And so you're going to start to say, oh, wow, I was actually enough. And that really hurts. My caregiver wasn't there for me. And I can realize that's not my fault. And maybe it's about I'm too much. Oh, I never considered that maybe my caregiver had such limitation of emotional capacity because they had never worked on their stuff. That doesn't make them bad or good. They're a human being. But when I asked for connection and that overwhelmed them I thought it was because of me oh they just didn't have the space for it I am not too much I am worthy of having my needs met and when you see it from your adult mind you can release these ideas and start to dissolve that start to let go and create space that oh my god this these concepts I held of myself were through this dynamic but if I can see this dynamic differently just like the rabbit versus the duck the same thing exists and you see it in a different way it will completely open up an entirely new world so now let's get to part two now if this video is resonating and you want to little bit more help on applying this to your life, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. We'll sit down and I'll help you uncover unconscious dynamics so you can start to understand how you can best take action towards creating the life you really want to live. So far, the people I've worked with have had really powerful realizations that have helped them create changes in their life, that have helped them create more peace, ease, and abundance in their life. If you resonate with this, click the link below, fill out the form, and I will email you. So part two, change the introduction to that new you. As step one, we're starting to dissolve it. It's going to give us some more, more space to see ourselves differently. But who do you need to be in that secure relationship? What kind of a person has a secure relationship? Do they feel they're worthy? Do they feel capable? Are they able to receive love? How do they see themselves? What is their relationship to themselves? The more you start to understand the concept that you'll need to have, the more you can start getting down to the assumptions and potentially start using step one to continue to dissolve. And then using your intention, Dr. Joe describes an intention as basically having a vision and weaving it, maybe past experiences you've had, even if it's just a small amount, Maybe you see somebody in life who's ex living that experience, right? Maybe it's an idea from a book. You're going to take all of that intel, all of that content, and start to weave together a vision of yourself. And one of the easiest ways for me to do this was getting to the end emotion. In that secure relationship, what was I really looking for? I was looking for stability. I was looking for consistency and a sense of safety. And as I started to do this, I started to relate. Have I ever had those experiences before? Even in a small amount, yeah. That started to reduce this separation that I felt before I found secure love. And for money, right? For me and money, it was always a roller coaster. And the more I started to understand what am I looking for for money? Oh, if I'm waiting for the money to come in, well, I'm going to stay in the idea that I'm stretching for it, that I'm searching for it, that I'm powerless to do anything about it. Because money is echoing our that first phase of brainwashing, our perspective of getting our needs met. So now money is a vehicle to get our needs met. So most likely it's going to replay that early on concept of access to your needs met. So what would money bring you? Maybe it's freedom. Maybe it's security. 
but how can you start tapping into this emotion and start to build that into a strong emotion where you start to associate a sense of safety because you will never be able to experience something or want to move towards something or be motivated for something if it doesn't feel safe. And as you start to dissolve the ideas you were first brainwashed into in that early on environment, dissolve those and open up, okay, what am I looking for here? And starting to say, well, I've had that before. If I've had it before, I can access it. And if I can grow it like a spark to a bonfire, I have autonomy. I have some power in this. This is the introduction in step two. Remember, the change, the more you can feel strong emotion into these concepts, into these assumptions, and that end emotion, the more you can do that collectively, the more it's going to grow this new vision of you. All right, now we're at step three, refreeze. So to go over it, the first thing we got to do is start to unfreeze. We've got, got to start unlocking from this attachment of how we were conditioned and first brainwashed as a kid in that early on environment, regardless of the intentions of caretakers, not blaming, not shaming, but advocating for ourselves. So we're dissolving that original brainwash. The second part is you're gonna to start to create uh, who you wanna change into with strong emotion and a sense of safety. Now, step three, is going to be refreeze, basically lock down into this concept of yourself and repetition and experience is going to be massive in this. I'm currently reading a book, The Developing Mind by Dr. Daniel Siegel, which is phenomenal. And his entire thing is about how our brain learns best and shifts when we experience something and how our brain was literally formed through interpersonal relationships as a kid. So as we start to have new experiences by learning how to refreeze on step two, it's going to literally give your mind the experiences it needs to shift, which will further accept this into your subconscious. But experience is massive. And since it'll be something new, this is a warning, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. There's this big misconception that when new things start happening, when you get these opportunities, it's just gonna be painted in roses and flowers. And yeah, there are beautiful experiences to come for you and new ones that are beyond your imagination. And most of them starting out are going to be paved in uncomfortable situations. So really start to ask, is this scary or is this unfamiliar? right? Start to really get conscious of that. Because for instance, maybe it's about money for you. Maybe that's what you're trying to brainwash yourself into su success. And maybe in the past you've had a little tiny bit of money. Maybe you're, you know, your nose is just above water and you've always had, you always have what you need, but it's never quite enough, right? You're kind of always in a, like a low level crisis or you're just worried about it. So a situation might pop up. Maybe you were supposed to get a raise or supposed to get a job and then it falls through. Okay. What's going to happen? Feelings are going to start to come up. Your first brainwash level. Oh no, I won't have what I need early on. That's what your body's remembering. You had to struggle or fight or, you know, that adult was going to ignore you. You're not conscious of this, but your body remembers and it's going to give you sensations. So maybe you start to get anxious. Oh God. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to want to tell myself the story that I don't ever have what I need, that everyone always lets me down. <sighs> okay, I'm breathing. I'm starting to get aware of the story, right? I'm starting to, to step away from that old brainwash dynamic. I'm breathing to regulate and ground my nervous system here. Your nervous system is your organ of perception. And remember in part two, when I showed you that picture and there was two different perceptions you had or you eventually had, at first you had one and then there was the other one. So your nervous system is your organ of perception. That's the lens you see through the world. So if it's dysregulated and stressed, it's going to find other things to perpetuate the story of why you should be scared. Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen's work is how I learned that the organ of perception is your nervous system. But in this situation, okay, I'm starting to get nervous. Okay, I gotta come back to my body somatically. <sighs> slow down here. Okay, am I gonna allow that old story? Oh, here we go. There, I'm getting let down again. No one ever is there when I need them. I never have one. <sighs> okay, <sighs> because this is associated with powerlessness, hopelessness, helplessness. And that dynamic is childhood. You couldn't change anything. You were stuck to just 
deal with it and hope that something outside of you came in to make it better. But what I'm encouraging you to do, and I'm telling you as possible, is to make that new choice to solidify the brainwashing of yourself and to vote for the successful concept. Okay. Okay. What can I do right now? Through my adult eyes, okay, maybe there's an idea, maybe I'll research some stuff, maybe there's uh, some other stuff, I could. maybe someone I can email, maybe there's somebody I can call, maybe I just need to go for a walk, maybe I need to go work out, maybe I can call somebody to give me a little support. What do you need so you can maintain your sense of autonomy and power and cap capability in this situation and say, you know, maybe one door closed, I'll get an even bigger door. Maybe this is a good thing for me. What can I learn from this? This is curious. This is open. This is in yourself. This is an adult vantage point as opposed to nothing ever works based on the past. So what story are you going to attach? What meaning? That ultimate decision in the moment, this is the gap. In neuroscience, your brain's ability to change happens when you make a new choice in this gap. The more you can even just prolong this experience. <sighs> I deserve what I need. I am able. How can I open myself? Am I resisting this? Does this new opportunity make me uncomfortable? Maybe un unconsciously, I'm scared to get what I need. Will I be selfish? Will I be looked down upon? Did my family judge people as selfish or arrogant when they had more than they needed? So starting to look at all those things, you can make the choice in the moment and choose that successful self-concept and solidify that brainwash capacity through experience. You can do it and you deserve it. Now, you might still be a little unclear on how best to create that part two. How can you shift these assumptions? This next video right here is going to show you exactly how you can start to completely change your assumptions and tap in the ability to see yourself in a completely new way. So check that out right here. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.